At this secure Toronto lab, they're growing what could be the most contagious strain of the coronavirus yet to study what kind of threat Omicron actually poses. Scientists know the variant has more mutations to the virus's spike than in previous strains. But deciphering what all those adaptations mean is painstaking work. We can't just look at one and say, oh, because of the mutation at 501, we know this is going to happen because it happened with, uh, with Alpha or with, with Delta. So that's why we have to, we have to look at it in, in uh, the, the whole thing in context, which is why we have to do all the, um, uh, all the work in, in high containment labs. Researchers are also studying the growing number of people testing positive for Omicron to answer three critical questions. Whether it's more transmissible, does it lead to more severe illness, and is it more resistant to our immune responses, especially in vaccinated people? We need to see uh, multiple cases. We need to review the charts. We need to compare it to, uh, uh, to patients who, who have the, the other variants to get sort of a, uh, a bit of an idea that obviously uh, that takes time. Uh. According to the latest data from South Africa, hospitals reported they saw a rapidly growing number of mostly unvaccinated patients infected by Omicron, suggesting higher transmissibility, but their symptoms were milder compared to previous waves, news that has fueled both hope and skepticism. I take all that with a grain of salt because we've seen anecdotal stuff come out on previous variants and it turns out not to be the case. And at the end of the day, most of the variants seem to present with a pretty similar clinical picture, but we'll see. For now, it's the Delta variant still driving the numbers. Since it took over this summer, more than 3,000 Canadians have died from COVID-19, overwhelmingly unvaccinated. Vicodopia, CBC News, Toronto.